So here we are on a fairly windy April day, about to set off for the 2015 Crop Doctor Tour. The tour is going to take us around the country as we assess the risk of disease in wheat leading up to the all-important T2 timing. We were here three or four weeks ago, we haven't had a lot of rain since, but um, despite that, we've still got septoria right up on some of the upper leaves of this crop. How important is septoria um, in the UK? I mean, yield responses in wheat vary by crop and by variety, but on average, the HCCA recommended list yields, it's around about a, a tonne and three quarters to the hectare of yield response we get. And I think we would usually say septoria is responsible for two thirds of that. Other diseases cause problems in certain varieties in certain situations, but septoria is universal. What are we seeing in terms of um, stem-based diseases here? Well, I've just had a quick look round, and the first couple of plants I pulled up was sort of showing stem base browning, which is likely at this time of year to be caused by Microdocium nivale. No surprise at this point, time of year, especially with the weather conditions we've had, which have been very dry, extremely warm for the time of year. All, all good for the development of, of Microdocium and the Fusariums in general. If growers are starting to worry about Fusarium and Microdocium, what can they do to um, start managing that risk now? Certainly, the application of something like proline which we know has an effect on fusariums and microdocium and applying that for your septoria will have an effect on what's happening down in the trash and so that will reduce the the levels of fusarium later on obviously the t2 spray in terms of fusarium isn't the most important spray it's the t3 but that t2 can reduce levels The disease pressure really hasn't perhaps driven on as we expected it to back at Christmas at the turn of the year. However, disease is still cycling because we've had wet conditions through heavy dews and a lot of wind and so we've had direct contact between leaves within the canopy yeah. which has helped to keep the disease going. Leading up to the T2 fungicide spray, can you just explain a little bit why it is so important to get your timings right? Increasingly we have limited kickback in the fungicides we have, so good protection going forward but limited kickback. So the longer you delay that spray, the less activity you have on that latent infection within the leaf. SDHI is a, an important chemistry group going forward. Can you just explain a little bit about how we go about stewarding these products going forward? Well, they are very important going forward um, in supporting the ASOL. So the two together, we, we need to support both partners there. So the best way of doing that is the balanced mixtures so that you're not overexposing either partner. You've got quite a lot of the disease here at this Calodema site. And what does that mean for the risk of disease leading up to the T2 spray? We don't usually apply full doses of the Azole SDHI mixtures, and so they is usually scoped to increase the dose rate. And the fungicide performance work, I think, would show that under highly curative situations, you see benefits from going above where we would normally be in terms of dose rate. So anything up to a full rate is what you could use. So Malcolm, what's the potential in the crops around your area at the moment? quite variable. Fields where we've got high organic status, then the potential looks absolutely fantastic. Probably better than we've seen for a number of years. But on the opposite side of that, the fields with low organic matter status mm. then are just starting to struggle. What will you be recommending at T2 for your growers? We will be recommending aviator in quite a lot of situations because over a number of years we've had aviator on farm uh, ever since it was first available. Uh, and it has really never let us down. So Jonathan, what are we seeing in terms of disease pressure at this site? There's septoria and there's yellow rust. Most other diseases aren't really present here. No mildew, no brown rust, thankfully, at this stage. So Fiona, we're here having a look at Uga which has got a very good rating for septoria resistance. Yeah, well, as you say, it's a seven, but you've still got a lot of lesions. You've got leaf four and five there with quite a lot of disease, and it's relatively high up, so it's rubbing on those emerging leaves again. It's certainly better, but it's not clean. Would you still recommend SDHIs at T2 on resistant varieties? Yes, yeah. um, I think it, it provides a, a balanced strategy so you're working with the resistance of the crop but you're not over reliant on that and you're using sensible robust chemistry to support it. Yeah.
four sites, four corners today, but Septoria, the main issue, all of them. We've seen Yellowrust, we've seen Mildew, but uh, Septoria is the big cause for concern, isn't it? And, uh, and, and the height of it in the crop, I think, is, is a real issue. So you've got that leaf four rubbing on leaf two, so that strong curative activity that we need with the flag leaf spray, so the mix of an SDHI and an easel to maximise the, the kickback that we can get and the long-term protection that we're going to need. Yeah, I think it's both elements that are going to be important, um, some curative activity as well as some protection, because that leaf's got to last for 12 weeks or so from now, and uh, yeah, it counts for 20 to 25 percent of light interception during grain filling. That's important to have, and we need to make sure we, we protect that. Mm -hmm. It's a big job to do. Mm -hmm.